Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa's Spot for Art, where I love sharing art from my heart and teaching you how to create a little joy in your life through some fun, simple, and quick art projects. I'm going to do a little bit of some poinsettia, a little holiday design for you today. I'm going to turn my camera around. So I don't know if you saw or you can see, this was already pre-sketched from a pumpkin fall design I did. Now, I'm going to use this and turn it into a Christmas design or holiday design or make it with holiday colors so I have out some a messy palette I have out some greens I have red and burgundy I have out this umber dark brown I have a little bit of yellow and black and white of course okay I think I need a bigger brush for this bottom though first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some of this fawn and brown and I'm gonna paint in my table. So we're going to paint in our table and we're going to paint in our background. I have pre-sketched on here design. My one big statement flower and then I just have little wispy stalks whatever going out the side for where I'm going to put the leaves in the background. And then I have some other filler stuff that I'm going to put in the background as well but they're going to go where I need them to go. We don't have to pencil them in just yet. I will use them to cover up a mistake or I will use them to fill in where I need to fill in if I you know placed one of my petals or one of my leaves differently and then I need to fill in somewhere. A lot of times us artists we do have a plan but that isn't to, that, to say that we stick to it. You know we're not machines sometimes things happen a little heavy-handed, a little light-handed, had too much caffeine, whatever it may be, and then your layout or your design is way different than it started out, and that is okay. It's art. It can't be wrong. There's no rules. It's fine. So I'm just doing my edge, too. Sometimes I do my edge. Sometimes I don't. If you've been following me, you would know that. If you're not following me, please hit the subscribe button at the bottom of this video so you will be notified next time I go live or put a new video tutorial up on YouTube. Okay, so we have our table in there. Okay. Since I'm using the dark and since I'm going in with this color, oops, and since I'm going to make a mess, sorry, I'm not going to wash my brush and I'm just going to keep going. I have the brown on my brush. I'm going to go in here. I'm just outlining a little bit of the petals and I'm going to paint in my vase. While my brush is dirty, I have brown on it. I'm picking up this, I think this is, it's either honey brown or raw sienna. I don't remember, I apologize. And I'm going to paint in my vase. Now when we do our vase, we want our strokes to curve with the vase. We want our vase to look rounded and we can do that by making our brush strokes rounded. So I'm using this whatever color it is, honey brown and the dark brown that was already on my dirty brush and I am painting in my strokes but on a curve to match the curve of our vase or vase. Do you say vase or vase? pick up a little bit more of the brown. I realized the sketch was of a pumpkin so we don't have to have a curved bottom like the segments of a pumpkin. I can just paint it straight across and I'm picking up a little bit of brown to add some shading to the outside edges of this vase and we will add some highlights too later once it dries. Okay so that's what we have so far. I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to wash my brush. Now I was really torn with what color background I was going to do on this. I have had a little bit of um, this sour apple and I think I'm just going to use that in my brush to clean and I'm going to flip this over so it's easier for me to reach. I'm going to dip my brush into this sour apple I have here and some white and again I'm just going to paint around my leaves or actually in this case petals. The sour apple, pick some white, and I'm painting over the lines I have in here. I'll be able to go back and see them, I believe. Or I know kind of where they are. And when I do my background, 
It does not have to be straight and horizontal lines, just like I had for my tabletop. I actually want these to go in different directions. I want my background to have a little bit of character. And we do that by just being a little bit free with our background. And this one I'm doing a little bit on a diagonal. I'm picking up the white. It's hard to see with the reflection in the day in my art room. It's nice that I have the sun on me, but I know it's a little bit harder for you guys. So again, I'm gonna keep up with this sour apple, but I'm coming in here with the white and I'm painting my on a diagonal. Most of this is gonna be covered up, so you really don't have to get too caught up in how the back of your the background of your painting looks. We're gonna have a lot going on back here. And so you don't have, oh, I messed it up, I got a little on the pedal, or I got a little here, I got a little there. It's not gonna matter. When we get to our background and we do in all the fillers and the greenery and the leaves, you're not even gonna know where you messed up, or even if you messed up. So, you don't have to worry about that. And I have a canvas that is making noise. So I don't know, can you guys see that? So I have a little bit, pick up a little bit more white for up in here. And I'm just lightening up this green background a little bit. But again, like I said, it's okay because we're gonna have so much going on back there, you're not even gonna know. Get some green and I'm just gonna go in and do my... And because the top of my painting is green and white, I'm just using my dirty brush and whatever color I get on here is okay. Okay, there we go. Let me wash my brush. All right, I wanna wait on my flower because I'm gonna paint my flower in some bright red and burgundy. So before that, I'm gonna go back here, down here and work on my table a little bit. So I want my background to be really dry when I add in my flower. So I'm just gonna get some brown. And I know most of this is brown but I just want to add in, oh, I need some tan again, or what is this, fawn? I'm just picking up some fawn, liner brush, and I'm giving our surface here just a little character. Adding in some almost dry brushing, wipe it off, and go in and do it with the white too. If you don't like the way it looks, and it becomes too dark or too light, you can go back over it, or see I had this too much of this white streak down here on the bottom. I just went over it a little bit with the brown. That's it. Then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and I'm just gonna do like a scrubbing motion. My brush is on a 45, not a lot of paint. And I'm just scrubbing back and forth, back and forth, adding a little bit of shadow to our tabletop. It doesn't have to be totally black. You just want it to be darker than the rest of the table. Okay? I'm gonna watch that. Okay, I can see my lines here. So I'm going to pick up some of the um, burgundy and some of the brown. I'm gonna give it a mix. So I want my stems to have a red tinge to them, but I want them to be dark too. And I'm going to put these stems in. I can see where my lines are mostly. If you run out of paint, go back and get some more paint. And fix it. One, two, three, four, thick. I guess I have one up here. And those are going to be the beginner of what's going to be my background filler leaves. Now you can do these in red. You can do these in green. It is totally up to you. I'm going to do these in red because then I have these other, like, pine things that I'm gonna put in, and they're going to be in green. So I have my little half inch flat brush, and I'm just gonna make these football type shaped leaves towards the end of my stems. Doesn't have to be right at the end, just up there towards the end. And I'm gonna put a few of them out to the sides and then fill them in. These are just drawn by making a little bit of a smiley face, and then a little frowny face, and they join on the corners. Same thing down here, a little smiley face, a little frowny face. The most important thing is to have 
your leaves pointing on both sides. That's why I call them little footballs. Again, you do not have to be like at the very, very tip of the top of the branch. It's okay that I mixed brown in here because my stem was still wet. And I'm just adding these in. They do not have to all be the same size. Some are bigger, some are smaller. The important, uh, important thing is that they are pointed on each end, tapered, and narrower at the ends and wider in the middle. When my paintbrush gets a little built up, I come over to my red, my paper towel, whatever it is, my apron, and wipe it off. This way I can fix the fibers on my brush, get out that paint buildup, and then my brush will go back to doing what I need it to do. Now if you see I have some of these leaves just floating around out there, I'm going to come back in and pull it, put in stems, so we're not going to worry about that. Some of my leaves are closer, some of them are further apart, and that is just fine. This one I might have to do twice because we want it to go over the brown table, but we shall see. So there we have in those clusters of our leaves. Oh, I didn't have to wash my brush, but I did. So now I'm just going to go back in. I'm going to pick up some of this. In this case, this is berry wine, but if you had a deep, bur deep burgundy, that would work too. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to give it a sweep of this deep burgundy of all my leaves. I'm just adding in some shading there to my leaves. If we were painting this with the one stroke method, we could have done this simultaneously by double loading our brush with the red and the burgundy. But as a beginner tutorial, put some on there. It is much easier to show you guys to go back. Oh, it's a problem. Let me wipe that off and let me get some scissors. I have a little stray fiber on my brush. And there we go. Okay, now it's totally up to you what side you darken or shade on your leaves. I do suggest that you pick a side and stick to it. Okay, I think we got them all. You don't want them to look too stripey. So if you go back afterwards and you look, if you need to soften up that line a little bit and blend it a little bit more, go right ahead. My paint is getting a little tacky, so I'm going to get out a little bit of this is what's called floating medium. Helps my paint move a little bit. I've been painting all day. My paint is getting a little bit tacky, so I put out a little bit of this floating medium. I will add that to my brush. So it'll help my brush move a little bit better. So now I'm back to my liner brush first. I'm going to go back to this color that we made here for our stem. A little bit of the burgundy, a little bit of the brown. Load up my liner brush and I'm going to put in stems. I forgot a leaf. Let me keep going. Put in stems on all my leaves. So I'm connecting the ones and then I'm bringing a stem up the middle. I need two more stems here. I need two more leaves. So there's one and there's two. Pick up the burgundy, add a little bit of burgundy down here and then add a little bit of burgundy to the bottom of this one. Oops. And then back to my liner. Okay. So now we have those background leaves going. And now I am going to work on my main flower. I'm going to pick up some of this. My brush is really dirty. Pick up some of my floating medium. I'm going to work it into my brush. I'm going to come over here to get some of my red and my burgundy. I'm putting the red and the burgundy on my brush at the same time and I'm working it in, okay? Now, I want all my, from this flower, the center was drawn in here because this was a different flower. It was a sunflower. I was using this canvas for something else that it ended up being extra. Now that it's gonna be a poinsettia, I want all my leaves, I mean all my petals, to start there. So I just put a mark right there in the middle, and that's where all my petals are going to start from. And I'm gonna draw a little bit of a different petal. This one has more of a curve to it. If this one is too complicated for you, you may just want to fill in the petal that you have there, and that is fine. I'm going to make it more of a curve to it, almost like a holly leaf. Ran out of paint. And again, we want all these 
petals to start at the same spot. And I'm going to turn and turn and turn my canvas as I work on these petals. Ooh. And we have them all starting at the middle. Some bread, some burgundy. And we're just making these swoops. Then I turn it around, got some bread and burgundy, and I'm making swoops again. And I have to put out some more burgundy. Actually, this is berry wine. Pick up some berry wine, get it in my brush. Again, I have a little too much paint buildup in my brush. So I wiped it off on my rag. And now I'm coming back, I need to fix this one. So now, I don't love that petal, it is way too big. But I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm gonna show you one of my tricks. How right, we're gonna fix that. I need to fix this one too. I picked up a little bit more of that floating medium. Help my brush move a little bit more. I'm just gonna keep adding in these leaves or these petals and layering around. Pick up some red, pick up some burgundy. And it's okay that we have that little bit of white in the middle. We're gonna take care of that. Burgundy, red, and then our last one. I'm always keeping the burgundy to the outside. I want the burgundy to be a little shade to the exterior of my petal, just like we did with our leaf. This one again, don't love it, need to fix it, much better. Okay, but again, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna even fix it even more, okay? So now we have our big statement poinsettia in the middle, and I'm going to wash my brush. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my liner. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water with my liner brush and I'm going to thin out both of my greens a little bit. So I'm gonna thin out my dark green and I'm just gonna thin out my light green a little bit too. Not too much, we don't want it to be real watery. We just want it a little thinner, it'll flow better with our liner brush. So I'm gonna load my liner brush with the dark. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna just sweep it through my light and I'm just going to put in stems like we did to begin with, these time these are gonna be green. I wanna load it with my dark. I'm gonna sweep it through my light. And there we go, okay? Dark, sweep it through the light. And now I'm gonna come in here, I'm going to add in little green. They're almost like branches of pine needle, pine tree, fir tree, all the way up to the top. With dark, swish it through the light, and go here. And I'm just gonna work my way around. We want them close to the stem, but then we don't want them totally thick. You wanna be able to see background through them. If you get too dark, pick up some more light. If you get too light, pick up some more dark. And this is a very, very light touch. You can see I have my pointer hanging out. I pick up the dark and then swish it through the light every single time I start. And these are very, very light, wispy-like strokes. They're supposed to be pine needles. Close to each other on the stem, but then not too much overlap out here. We want to be able to see through the greenery to the back. I don't know if you saw before, you might have missed it, but when I grab the dryer, I put a few little highlights onto my uh, vase. That's why I said we work from the bottom up. My red's a little wet here. I might want to wait. We shall see. I know I tell everybody, if you want to fix it, be patient, let it dry. And then I'm probably like the least patient person. I need a little bit more water again for my dark green. And then sweep it through. Okay. I'm just going to put a couple of these. I'm going to go into my brown. Let's see. Put one here. Put one here, and then we'll just put a little one here. Okay, these are gonna be like little berry branches. It's almost like you're building a tree, and each one of these is a, a little branch, and you want them to Y off. So I'm using my liner brush. I'm putting in these lines. They're not straight. They go at an angle, and every time you add another one, it makes a Y. And then we have this little, need water, this little tiny one over here on the other side. 
I think before I add my berries to this though, I want to add my details to my flower. So I'm going to go back to the black. I think I need a little water for this. Very thin. And I'm just adding in tiny, tiny, tiny stem in the black to the inside petals, middle of my petals. That is it. I'm going to dry that off. Then I'm going to go to my yellow. I'm going to use the back of my brush, my brush handle, and I'm going to dip in the center. I'll point that out. Okay. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. I'm going to get out some more of this um, berry wine. I'm going to thin it up a little bit with some water. And I'm going to add berries on all the ends of this, I don't know, this twig, this brand, whatever I, whatever you want to call this. So wherever I have an end to one of these little branches, I'm adding a berry. And I like to use the back of the brush to just get a decent sized circle when we do that. Let's see, did I miss any spots? I think I got them. I think that's it. I think that works. And then last but not least, I'm going to go back to my white and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight to some of my leaves and then to some of those sticks that I put in. Not all of them, just a little highlight on some of the wood stems, whether they're for the big leaves we did to begin with or these smaller little sticks that we did at the end. And there you go. Turn you guys around. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. A little just repurpose of a canvas that I drew for something else. And now we have a holiday design. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you next time.